Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we covered ionic compounds in the previous part one of this lecture, and now we're going to do part two and start with the molecular compounds. Molecular compounds, remember, are made of only nonmetals. The smallest piece is called a molecule instead of a formula unit like it is for the ionics. It can't be held together because of opposite charges, and you can't use charges to figure out how many of each atom go in there. But the naming of them is easier. Ionic compounds use the charges to determine how many of each. The name of a molecular compound tells you the number of atoms, and it uses prefixes to tell you that number. So here's a quick rundown of your Greek and Latin root prefixes that we will be using in molecular compounds. Mono is one, di is two, tri is three, tetra is four, penta is five, hex is six, hepta seven, octa eight, nana eight, 9 and deca is 10. So make sure that you do know these prefixes and it'll come a lot easier for you. So to write the name it's going to be two words. The prefix plus the name and then the prefix plus the name plus IDE. Okay so the exception to the rule is we don't write mono. Okay if there's only one of the first element. So this element right up here is dinitrogen oxide. Okay. The second one, it tells you diphosphorus pentoxide means that there's two phosphoruses and five oxygens. So it's P2O5. Acids and bases get a little bit more difficult to name. So we're going to look at this one. Calcium hydroxide. Bases produce the hydroxide ions, or OH1- when dissolved in water. They must have the hydroxide name in them and connected to the metal that is part of the base. So the same name and formula rules as other ionic compounds for bases. So I want you to answer this one on your own. I want you to pick the correct one for KOH. Is it potassium hydroxide? potassium 1 hydroxide, potassium monohydroxide, or potassium oxygen hydride. Once you think you've had that answer, feel free to check with me if you're not sure. For acids, acids are compounds that give off hydrogen ions, or H+, or H1+, when dissolved in water. They have to have a hydrogen in them, and they will always be some hydrogen next to an anion. The anion determines the name. So if the anion attached to the hydrogen in, ends in IDE, put the prefix hydro and change the IDE to ic acid. So for example, hydrogen ion and a chloride ion ends with IDE, so it becomes hydrochloric acid. The second one is the same because it's hydrogen plus sulfide ions. The IDE gets changed to ic acid, so that becomes hydrosulfuric acid. If the anion has an oxygen in it and it ends in ITE or ATE, um, you change the names as well. So if it ends in A-T-E, you change the suffix to ic acid. So the first one is hydrogen ion and a nitrate ion. So it ends in A-T-E, so you change it to an ic, so it becomes nitric acid. If it ends in I-T-E, you change the suffix to O-U-S and then acid. So it's nitrous acid for the, third, or for the fourth one. These are confusing, so make sure that you are practicing this material and do the practice sheets that go with it. So let's take a look at formulas. Hydrochloric acid, remember it's an ic acid, so that means that it's a chloride ion with a hydrogen in front. So the name will tell you the ion and make sure that your charges cancel out. So that's just HCl. Remember it starts with hydro if there's no oxygen involved. It does not start with hydro when there is oxygen. Remember the ATE becomes, comes from ic and ITE comes from os. 
So acetic acid would be an acetate ion. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. H2C2O4. What do you think it is? Do you think it's hydrogen carbon dioxide? Do you think it's hydrogen carbonate? Hydrogen oxalate? Carbonic acid? Or oxalic acid? Make sure you try this out. And again, you're going to need to refer to the polyatomic ions a lot when you're doing naming of compounds. Okay, I'm going to give you this one. It's oxalic acid. So what's the formula for nitrous acid? Remember, OUS means that it ended in what? OUS means that the anion ends in ITE. So nitrous acid, you're looking for a nitrite ion. So that's going to be C, HNO2. So first of all, remember that you have to determine the type of compound involved, whether it's ionic or molecular. Secondly, you're going to figure out the name or the formula. Acids always have hydrogen on the beginning. Metals always mean that it's ionic. And no, and no H and no metal equals a molecular compound. And only molecular compounds uses the prefixes like hepta and penta and hexa, etc. The Roman numeral is not how many, it's what the charge is on the transition metal. And hydro means that there's no oxygen present in the compound. Okay, now there is a lot of practice available for you on the Moodle site. I highly recommend that you do these because it will save your bacon so many times for the rest of the semester. So please make sure you do them and feel free to check with me on office hours if you want to get them corrected. Have a fantastic day.